Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to do indexing for matrices inside of R here, it's episode 23. Uh, we're gonna do a quick couple short examples, and then I'm gonna do a more complicated, kind of a realistic what you would actually use this for at like a bank or some other institution here. So let's just start off quickly. Um, you know, let's say we have credit data in a matrix, and we're just gonna call it credit because <laughs> that's what I like to call it. Uh, we're gonna create a matrix here. Okay, so we have this credit matrix I made here. I'll show you exactly what these mean. So the first three items here, which are gonna be the first column. So let's just print it out real quick so we can look at it. All right, you can see it down here, first column. Second column looks kind of wonky because it's so close to the third column. Uh, but our first column, so column one, is going to be PD, which is called probability of default. So what is the probability of default? that you're gonna default on a loan, for example. Uh, let's do column two here. And column two is going to be our employment status. So if you have a zero, you are unemployed. If you have a one, you are employed. And then finally, we're going to have column three. And column three is going to be our annual income here. So we have three individuals. Uh, they have three separate salaries here. And as you can see in this nice little pretty matrix in the bottom, this is all of our data that we're gonna be having and that we need for this example here. Now, let's start off with a column subset. So let's say I want to pull some sort of column out here. Let's say this is development data set for some sort of model. Uh, let's say what we're trying to model is going to be our PDs. And I wanna separate that out and just remove that from the data set. I just want the independent variables or the predictive variables here. So I need to drop column one or more specifically, I want to keep columns two and three. So let's just call this indap because this is independent variables. We're gonna say, okay, take the credit matrix. Um, we don't want any of the rows, I want all the rows. So since I want all the rows, I'm gonna leave it blank, put a comma, and then I want to specify the columns I want, which is going to be two and three. And you run this, and if you print this out, you can see now that I have uh, just columns two and three in a new matrix, of course, and so now I have a new column one, column two, but it's the data subsetted from the original matrix of the credit matrix. Now you can also do a row subset and you know it can be done in the exact same way, but let's say that you know I want the top two people since our data set is so tiny. And so the way we're gonna do this is we'll create a new matrix called people and I will subset the original credit matrix with all three columns. And now I'm gonna specify the rows I want. So I want from rows one to rows two, put a col comma, and then we don't put anything for the columns because I want all the columns. We'll run that and then we'll print it and look and okay, I have your PDs, I have your employment status and your, empl and your annual income for just the top two people here. So super simple, that's how you do rows, that's how you do columns. Okay, so now we're gonna do a, you know, a more realistic, example and let's say that we have uh two matrices here we're going to continue to use the credit matrix let's say we have the credit matrix but in the real world let's say this is a you know a massive table or more specifically you know a massive matrix and let's say i don't know it's a thousand columns and it's like a million rows here and this is going to be our original data set here so this is going to be called original data now let's say a department or someone else sends me a new table here. So we're gonna have a new table and this new table has updated information. So imagine you have this massive credit data set, right? This massive matrix here with credit data. And then a new department, let's say finance or accounting or someone sends me a new smaller matrix. They say, by the way, I have these people and they have updated information. And as we mentioned here, you know, in our hypothetical here, so I have a million rows, a thousand columns, but they've updated just a little bit of information. So let's say the income on these individuals just updates, right? I wanna take the smaller table that has like the customer ID, for example, and I wanna take that along with their new values for new income, and I wanna update them. But I don't wanna to have to do this manually, I just want to use the new data in the small table, and I just wanna replace the data in the big table 
you know, I just want to do it to do it right. I don't want to have to go through and do a bunch of headaches and manually do this. So let's just start off here with let's print uh, our credit data, our credit matrix. And you can see here, this is the one that we've been looking at and kind of working with. And, you know, let's say I have this new smaller matrix and I need to update uh, the following PDs such that uh, the PD for 0 0.82, so that first one, that first customer, that that needs to be updated to uh, 0 0.79. They became more or less risky here. And then I also need to update uh, the customer with 0 0.56. And this needs to get updated to 0 0.65. So maybe there's a mistake or something. They need to swap that, you know. And at the same time, you know, the income needs to be updated from uh, $43,002 uh, to $40,000 and from $27,942 to 28,000. So I'm gonna write some code here, explain it to you in a second, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the new credit data, which I need updated. And I want to update, as I know here from this table, one and three, and then I also need to update one and three over here. Okay, so what this is saying, just to give you kind of the ins and outs of here, uh, row, so these are the, gonna be the rows here. Uh, rows one, here and three here need to get updated, okay? We know that. So I need to assign a new value to that. So this needs to get replaced. And then for the column piece here of the matrix, so again, this is the indexing and subsetting here. Remember rows, columns here, we're gonna define here. Uh, and the column piece here, columns one, which was these ones that we were replacing, right? And then also column three. So these are gonna be the columns here. So these are the values we need to replace uh, and we're going to assign new values to them. And the way we're going to do that in this case is we're going to make this little sub matrix, which I was talking about. This is the matrix that somebody sent to you that's magical, that has all the new data, needs to get plugged in. And the new values are going to be 0.79, as we mentioned. It's going to be 0.65 and then it's going to be 40,000 and it's going to be 28,000. Of course, the number of rows here. So in row... It's gonna be equal to two and we're gonna run this and this is gonna update our credit data here. So let's print it out so we can look at it. And exactly what we just set up here. So we need 0.82 to be 0.79. So 0.82 is originally here, it's now 0.79 and 0.56 needed to get updated to 0.65. That happened. Now $43,002, which is up here, needs to get swapped out to 40,000, which happened. And then finally, this 27,942 needs to get updated to 28,000. So code-wise here, right, this first piece is going to be what is assigned to. So this is where we're assigning to right here. This is the first piece. And uh, the second piece here, or the second portion I guess. So everything on the right hand side of the assignment operator is going to be a new matrix that we're going to assign it to. So now I could have saved this, you know, as something else. Like, I don't know, Dimitri's awesome matrix here. And then we could have plugged Dimitri's awesome matrix and assigned that to these values here. So I just wanted to point this out because this is a little bit tricky, especially if you have real world data sets or matrices here and you're trying to assign them here. But this is something you could do if you had, you know, I just wanted to replace one column. Uh, you could do this here and assign it to do a full column. Now, if you knew the exact placements, I needed like the first row and the third row, and then the first column and the third column, and I needed those four data points swapped out. Like in this example, this is a little bit more complicated to think about, but this is something you could use it for as a way to do indexing. Uh, and replace portions of matrices. It's just kind of a little unique here. And then as a final note, as usual, there's something we can do here. Um, we can actually select the rows or columns here we want to drop. So before I kept saying, right, I want to keep rows uh, two and three, or columns two and three, or I want to keep rows one and two, which is fine. But, you know, in the real world, if I have a massive data set, or matrix, and I want to drop 
only a few things, which is usually the most common case, uh, we can use a negative value. So use a negative value. So in the real world, right, if I have a thousand columns, let's say, and I wanted to keep 998 of them, I wanted to drop two of them. It would make no sense to try to like type out and list 998 different columns I needed or even doing chunks and sections around it's a little bit tedious. It's far easier to use a negative sign and just drop them. And one way to do this is let's just create a new matrix called small. We'll do credit and we're gonna leave all the rows and we're gonna drop the first column. So the same example in the beginning, we kept them with, you know, specifying columns two to three. Uh, in this case, we can print this out and you can see we end up with the same one. So the credit data set that was updated here, uh, what we're gonna do is just drop those PDs, that first column. We end up with our employment status and our income here. And just for completeness of this video, we can do the same thing with rows. So in the first example, we kept the first two rows, but I wanted to drop the third row. So in this case, you could do negative three, which will drop the third row. And then nothing in the columns, we're gonna keep all those. And we can run that. And now this new small data set, which again, I probably shouldn't name them the same thing for best coding practices, but this is learning, so we're gonna let that slide. Uh, in this case though, right, you can see here, this is the original one. We had 0 0.79, 0 0.17, which has stayed here. Again, everything else in the rows is the same. We just dropped that last row of 0.65, so. Anyways, that's how you do real basic subsetting with dropping rows and columns. Uh, that's how you do a little bit of complicated things. You can jigger things around as we saw in this example here, and you can actually assign portions of one matrix to another matrix to overwrite them and correct things. Again, in practice, this gets a little more complicated. Uh, and then again, you can use negative values as well to quickly pick and choose dropping rows and columns. But that's how you do indexing of matrices inside of R or subsetting as I like to call it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, until next time.